morning everyone morning. lovely to see you all this morning um, we invite you now to stand and sing with us we're going to start with how great thou art We're going to sing Victory in Jesus.
Right, we're going to sing Nothing But The Blood next. you can open your Bibles to Hebrews chapter 4 verses 15 to 16 cool I'll just read this a little bit we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who in every respect has been tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us then, with confidence, draw near to the throne of grace, that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. So I want to start off with a question. Hands up, who here has felt pain? I don't mean stubbed your toe pain. I mean, heart and gut wrenching, emotional pain. Pain from trauma, felt isolated, betrayed, misunderstood, being laughed at. Have we ever felt like enough is enough and you want to throw the towel in? I have. But do you know who else has felt those very same emotions and gone through those same struggles? our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. He endured. Endured the pain of the crucifixion, the brutality, being mocked, beaten, hung up and isolated, betrayed by a friend, a brother, and felt the pressure from the magnitude of what was to come. He is our high priest that sympathizes with us because he has experienced it all. The word sympathize 
in the scripture is a compound word built on the words with and suffer Christ suffers with us our pain pains him multiple times throughout the gospel accounts we are told Jesus was moved with compassion his heart is drawn to our distress he is Emmanuel God with us the same God that in Hosea we're told spoke the words my heart recoils within me my compassion grows warm and tender what was endured by him in the past is now shouldered by him in the present so how can he God in flesh relate to my sin my shame my struggle with temptation Christ was without sin first Peter tells us he committed no sin neither was deceit found in his mouth the devil threw everything at Jesus when he was at his most vulnerable and he never yielded with you and I the spirit is willing but the flesh is weak we give up and we give in to temptation so easily so quickly so think of the lengths that Jesus went to to resist temptation in Gethsemane he sweat blood he knows the struggle he is our great physician that has felt our symptoms so go to him with your pain your trauma your inner battles he knows your heart next time you fall short or you struggle know that you have an advocate that raises his pierced hands to the father and says by my wounds they are healed remember their sins no more he is an advocate the scripture tells us he deals with us gently that he is gentle and lowly in spirit in John Jesus says whoever goes to him he will never cast out so go to him take it to the Lord in prayer confess your sins repent renounce them and see them as God sees them and be washed in the blood of the Lamb let's pray Father I come to you through your Son our great mediator and intercessor and I think thank you Lord you do not deal with us by scolding but with a gentleness and draw us unto yourself and to repentance by way of your loving kindness Lord I know there are brothers and sisters in this place that are struggling with all kinds of things I ask Father that you will give them a willing to take their problems to you and that your peace will guard their hearts in your son's precious name, amen. It's good to be back home again, isn't it? This is my first normal week back. You were blessed last week when I was away. It says something, doesn't it? Arthur Manning, up you come. <laughs> <laughs> That's a suspicious look. Is that his birthday on Monday? It was Arthur's birthday on Monday. So we're going to sing happy birthday. Oh. <laughs> happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Arthur. Happy birthday to you. Nan Welsh or Kelly will tell us off. Pemba Happy Pemba Happy 
Oh, we pray the Lord will raise up the next generation of Arthurs. Such a blessing to the church. Alex, Cody, you're next. We're a family, aren't we? So we share in all good things. Amen. Amen. So, um, Alex has been with us how long? Three years, something like that? And Cody, well, quite recently. But the Lord's worked in your life. And when the Lord works in your life, he transforms, and he brings growth, and he brings unity, and he brings family. Amen? Amen. Evidence for God's work is, is, is this life-giving unity. I'm waffling. They're, they're getting married. <laughs> Isn't that brilliant? The other happy couple are off in Italy on their honeymoon and we're already <laughs> replacing them. Isn't that good? <laughs> right, thank you both. Well done. Who else? I can't think at the moment. Um, OK, we'll move on to the next thing. I need Mandy. I need Sophie. Where's Sophie? Up there. Can I stand here, Mandy? Here she is. <laughs> Thank you, both. So, um, about a month before the pandemic, Mandy came up to me and said, John, the Lord's speaking to me and telling me we've got to provide a food provision for people in the valleys. And we had a chat, and what we initially thought we were going to do was partnered with local retailers to get food to make lunch boxes for um, those that don't qualify for free school meals, but whose parents are working, but they're working poor. The people that, that miss the qualification, they, they can't afford to feed their kids, but they don't qualify for free school meals. Yeah. And that was the plan, wasn't it? Yeah. So we had... We yes, had plans. Yeah. So we had... Uh, we had it all organised and everything set up and then, I don't know if you missed it, but there was a global pandemic. <laughs> and overnight, that immediately turned into Food Share, where we won an award, which is a plaque on the front, of, just behind this wall here, from the council, because we provided 50,000 meals in that first lockdown to, to the vulnerable and needy in the church. It was wonderful. And we had gangs of people delivering, um, furlough British gas drivers, people from the parole service, the shadow home secretary. We had them all working for us. And it was a, you know, a wonderful season. It led to a lot of growth in the church and the gospel was heard. And when the lockdown finished, obviously there's been all sorts of turmoil ever since. And um, you know, the, food, the food share continues to be one of our most important ministries. Um, our dear sister Mandy, is going through a very tough time at the moment, as we all know, with Russ. Russ is um, incredibly poorly and needs a lot of care. Also, Mandy's parents, the fa father's in remission, but mum potentially has cancer. So Mandy's doing a lot for her family. So um, Mandy's going to step back from food share. With our thanks and our love for all she's done over recent years for the people in this community. Sophie is going to step up and um, be the customer face of Food Share. So Mandy's going to do the paperwork behind the scenes and, and Sophie's going to be there opening it up and um, leading that work from now on. So thank you both for all you've done and all you're oh, doing. Yeah. Thank you. um, we're hoping in September, if things ease for Mandy, we're going to continue the IT literacy through Mandy. But that's, we're going to park that short term because she's got a lot to deal with and she just needs to rest and be fed by the word. And uh, Sophie, you know, you, you have our blessing and our love and support. So, um, Jason, can you pray yeah. for them both? Yeah, come. I'll pray on mic. Let's pray. 
Lord, I just want to give thanks for all that you're doing and all that you've done here among us. Lord, I thank you for Mandy, and I thank you for Sophie, Lord. I thank you for their family, Max. Lord, I thank you for the work that's, that you called them to, and they did it faithfully, Lord. They did it without pay. They did it with... That it was from the heart, Lord, and they served you as you instructed us in the Bible to feed the poor, to help those who are in need, to pray for those who are sick. Lord, you, you commissioned this for us to do. And Lord, we thank you for the work that they've done. Lord, I just want to pray for Mandy's mother and father and for Russ, Lord. I pray that your hand be upon them. And Lord, that you would be with them. Lord, just strengthen Lord, if there be, if it be your will to heal, heal her mother, Lord, and 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 to heal Russ also, Lord. I pray in the name of Jesus, do so, because we know that you're able. We pray boldly to the throne room of grace, asking, Lord, for divine provision and healing for this family. So, Lord, be with them and strengthen them and bless them in this work. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. For the glory of God, Esther, Gimani, and Sophia Ram, we're going to Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Owen's next. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> He's got the voice to bellow from up there. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want me to introduce you? You're going to say it all. Okay. Hello, everyone. Um, so, as most of you know, we had a, a walk planned um, for Easter, which didn't come about, obviously, God's will. Um, so, me and John have been talking, and uh, we'd like to, there was a lot of interest, but because of the distance, um, we thought it might be better to do a local one instead. So, the 27th, Saturday, yeah, Saturday the 27th of May, um, we plan on doing one from the church. And John mentioned that before the pandemic, or during the pandemic or over the yeah. pandemic, uh, you know, used to go up and pray uh, towards the British up by the tips, was it? Yeah, and pray over the valley. So we decided to return to an old thing and make it a new thing. And from there then, we'll try and make it a semi-regular thing possibly bi-monthly, um, depends on the demand. And we're gonna strategically uh, target different parts of the valley that we wanna pray over, um, where God leads and God wants us to move uh, and our attention, and uh, make it a proper prayer walk, one with purpose and with drive and with a heart for the gospel and for the lost. Um, also for ourselves as well as an opportunity for fellowship um, and just to get out in God's glorious creation and enjoy it and be his people. So, um, so yeah, so Saturday the 27th, we're looking probably about meet here about half past 10, um, but we'll, I'll, I'll get on the WhatsApp and, and put some details on there closer to the time. Um, and if anybody's got any ideas locally uh, in the future, if they want to do anything else, um, just give us a shout, basically. Um, yeah. Okay. Thank you, Alan. Prayer walks. When we were out posting uh, cards for Easter, I was shouted at by a woman for praying outside her house. So um, I prayed for her. <laughs> that I mean, really made her yeah. So uh, I'm, I'm excited to see what's going to happen when not throughout in force praying. Uh, Sue, can you come and bring the notice here, Sue? Thank you. Morning, all. Lovely to see you all. So, a special welcome today to any visitors we have amongst us. You can see there's lots of new people here, so welcome to you all today. And it's lovely to see Paul and his wife. As usual, there's Sunday school and creche during the service and tea and coffee afterwards so please feel free to stay and chat together 
Tonight's evening meeting is at six up in the hall. And then seven o'clock tomorrow is Bibles and Biscuits for the ladies. There's no tots this week, but prayer meeting will be on Wednesday at half past 11, where John is continuing the series in Ezekiel. Thursday evening at seven is the men's meeting. And on Friday between six and eight is Nod for Youth. Food should be open Monday, Friday, Saturday. Yeah, just a full warning. Won't be open um, a week. Monday. So just to let everyone advance notice, it's not going to be open on um, Monday, May the first, a week Monday because of the bank holiday. Saturday, the sixth of May, uh, we're having a time of prayer for the coronation, and that's starting at nine o'clock. So thank you all for the gifts of the work of the church, and we look forward to seeing you next Sunday. Thank you, sir. Okay. I've got a couple of freebies here, kindly donated by faithful servants of the church. It's a DVD on the six miracles of Calvary, and it's sealed. So it's brand new. So if you want them, they'll be at the front here. The first two have them. And when you finish with them, pass them on to someone else to watch. Sophie, can you bring God's word for us? Thank you. We're in Mark chapter 3. John, I need to check this with you. Am I finishing at, at 17 or 18 or 19? Um, 18. 18. Right, there we go. Mark chapter 3, and we're taking it from verse 7. Jesus withdrew with his disciples to the lake, and a large crowd from Galilee followed. When they heard all he was doing, many people came to him from Judea, Jerusalem, Idumea, and the regions across the Jordan, and around Tyre and Sidon. Because of the crowd, he told his disciples to have a small boat ready for him to keep the people from crowding him. For he had healed many so that those with diseases were pushing forward to touch him. Whenever the evil spirits saw him, they fell down before him and cried out, You are the Son of God. But he gave them strict orders not to tell who he was. Jesus went up on a mountainside and called to him those he wanted, and they came to him. He appointed twelve, designating them apostles, that they might be with him and that he might send them out to preach and to have authority to drive out demons. These are the twelve he appointed. Simon, to whom he gave the name Peter, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, to them he gave the name Boanerges, which means sons of thunder, Andrew, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Thomas, James, son of Alphaeus, Thaddeus, and Simon the Zealot. I thought it was wise to give the English teacher that reading. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Sophie. You're very well. Should we rise and sing?
So about six years ago now, five, six years, I've lost track because of the pandemic. i never forget, I was dropping the kids off at school up in Garnteg, I'm sat in the car and I had a message ping through on Facebook from a young lady who said, God's drawing me to come to church, but I can't come on a Sunday. Is there any other day that I can come? And I said, well, we have a prayer meeting on Wednesday, if you fancy it. Thought nothing of it. And then Wednesday, lo and behold, she rocked up. And we had a chat and she said, I can't do Sundays. You see, she's a professional singer. And late nights on Saturdays, Sunday mornings are a write-off. So she came for a few weeks on a Wednesday and loved it. And then, well, she started coming on Sundays. And then uh, she sat at the back. And I said to her, would you like a Bible? No, it's not for me. I don't have time to read the Bible. I'm not a reader. All right. And then a few weeks later, God's told me I should get a Bible. <laughs> <laughs> and then a few months after that, you know, the Lord's clearly working in you. We've got baptisms coming up. What do you think? Not for me. And a few months later, I've been reading my Bible, John. It says I should be baptised. This is a woman who hears the Spirit talk. And we're so grateful to have her as part of her family. I love her. She's my sister. And I trust her. And um, for three years, with her talents, she sat at the back humbly, barely singing a word. And uh, for the last three years, she's blessed us leading the, the worship team. And uh, last week, she began a new ministry for the church going into schools, going into care homes, teaching them to sing the gospel. Isn't that incredible? So we're going we're gonna to commission Laura into that ministry now. So can you join me up here, please, Laura? Thank you. So the Bible is clear that God works through the local church. We are the body of Christ. Amen? There is no such thing as an only child in the Christian faith. We are family. Should we say that together? We are family. So any work for the kingdom must then come under the care and the provision and the support and authority of the local church. In this case, Nodfa. So this service is to recognise Laura's new role and formally commission her sending Laura into the work with our blessing and prayers. In order that the importance of this solemn responsibility may be clearly understood, I will now ask Laura the following questions in the presence of God and this congregation. So the first question, Laura. Do you believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit? And do you personally confess Jesus Christ as your Lord and Saviour? Second question, do you believe the scriptures of the Old and New Testament to be the word of God and the only infallible rule of faith and conduct? I do. Do you wholeheartedly and without reservation affirm your belief in the biblical doctrines of the Christian faith as according to our statement of faith? I do. Do you believe in your heart that God has truly called you to this work under the oversight of this local church? I do. Do you promise to fulfil your charge faithfully? I do. Do you promise to be faithful in prayer and in the study of God's word and to live in such a way both publicly and privately as to be an example to us all? I do. Good. Can the church all please stand? This is a question for you all. And the answer is we do. Do you promise to encourage Laura in her many responsibilities and to assist and to support her in her labours for the kingdom? Do you promise to do all you can to care for her practical needs and be her comfort for the honour of God? Please be seated. Can I ask Brother Jason to come up? Brother Mark? Brother Richard? Kevin and Wayne. Thank you. Steve here. Okay. 
If you stand in the middle there, actually, Dawn, that's it. Like back in singers. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's a grim boy band, isn't it? <laughs> In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the head of the church, and in recognition of the gifts and calling of God given to you, we now, as the leaders of this church, lay hands upon you and hereby set you apart for the work. I'd like to invite the elders and deacons to pray. Father, it is a remarkable thing that before the beginning of time, you knew Laura. Mm. And it was always your plan to bring her to salvation. And Lord, what you have done is a wonderful thing. Before the beginning of time, you decided that Laura would be uniquely gifted and blessed with skills. Before she even knew you, you gifted her and prepared her to minister. And Lord, it is our pleasure, our honour to set her apart for this special ministry. Father, I pray that your spirit will be upon her, that you will work through her, Lord, with power, with might, that many people, old and young, will come to know you as their Lord and Saviour. Mm. Thank you, Lord, that we can be as a family, as a church, we can come around her and support her and love her and encourage her. Help us, Lord, we pray, to keep us strong in the faith, to keep fighting for you, for the glory of your kingdom. Bless the work of her hand, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I just thank you for the special talents and gifting that you've given and all that. <coughs> and Lord, I pray, Lord, that you do not rely on those, Lord, that she serves you, that she would feed the blood of Jesus, that she would look for your mercy for all her strength. And ask this of Jesus' name. Amen. missionary to these schools and to these old people's homes. Lord, people are long forgotten in these old people's homes. But Lord, we thank you that you have laid upon this woman's heart to, to share the love of God and the joy of the Lord with them. And Lord, as she, as she goes, just strengthen her. And Lord, just pour out your spirit upon all who hears this woman sing for the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, she is humble. She is a humble woman in heart, and she loves her sin. Mm. Let this love, Lord, shine through them in the schools and in these care homes. For Lord, you died for all. And you commissioned all who come to the knowledge of the truth. Lord, we ask in Jesus' name that you would bless her and her family as we, as a church, would support her in all her needs. This I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Laura. Thank you. <coughs> Wonderful. You're official now, Laura. Yes. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, I didn't. I didn't plan to say anything, but I just wanted to thank everyone for your support. I've had some just lovely messages, um, and I just wondered if 
Sue and Liz could come up. I just wanted to personally thank Sue and Liz because they have spent so much time going, doing all the background stuff um, for me. And I'm just so grateful. Liz has had a house full of instruments <laughs> uh, and sorted contracts as, as Sue's been going to work and then coming home and messaging me in the evening then trying to sort things out for me. So just... And I just wanted to thank Pasta because uh, without you, obviously, and your bright ideas, <laughs> <laughs> but it was from God because actually the beginning of uh, January, I prayed to God and I told no one about this prayer. And I asked God, um, I said, I want to use my music more, but for the good of the kingdom, I didn't, you know, I'm used to going out and singing, but I didn't want that anymore. And then a week later, John messaged me. So everything this week, uh, last week, behind the scenes, I'll be honest, it was a bit chaotic. Um, my printers broke, both of them. My speaker broke, but I prayed before I went in and I prayed coming out, thanking the Lord because this, oh, it was amazing. Absolutely brilliant in, in the schools, in the care homes. And yeah, it was just fantastic. But a bit, I have got flowers, but it's a bit weird, isn't it, giving flowers to a man? But, but that's what I thought. I'll give them to Harriet, yeah? For you and for your wife. Uh, thank you, Lauren. Harriet, don't say I never get you anything. Um, <laughs> No, seriously, the Lord has just opened doors, and we're in all the schools. You know, when this is fully going, thousands of children are going to be singing God's praise every week through this ministry. It's incredible, isn't it? And we'll have more mornings like we had Easter Sunday as we bring them in to, to sing. Excellent. Should we sing now? Yeah. Yes. Let's sing.
about it for the altar. I forgot another thank you. Okay. And, and that was uh, to you, Andy. <laughs> So, and to the other musicians that met up with me, um, I just wanted to say as well, I'm not just working with the schools and the care homes. I want to work with the musicians of the church. There's not just us that play instruments in the church. Actually, we're really blessed um, to have people who can play wonderfully in the church. And I found that out in the last week. But I came into, I asked for some help and a bunch of people came and it was really funny because I said, I've made something up in my head but I can't play it. So I sang it to them, um, this gospel warm-up that I wanted to do and for the kids to follow. And they just all sort of looked and smiled. And then Andy sat there going, bum, 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 ba -dum, ba -dum. and um, he went home and he then sent me a track with bass, drums, guitar, everything on it, exactly what was in my head that I wanted. He did it. So, yeah, thank, I'll bring you all some cakes in our next uh, <laughs> section. Thank you. The kids were all dancing to it on a Sunday, uh, Friday night. Um, do the kids want to go to Sunday school? Why the kids go to Sunday school, I've got to tell you, Henry, who was baptised a couple of weeks ago, is now a global superstar. Because everyone's heard his story, and I'm getting messages from churches all over the UK saying, can we share your video on Henry's baptism? Isn't that incredible? Chainsaw Henry. <laughs> Brilliant. Right, should we pray? Loving and heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you that we can come under your word as a family who shares in all things, good and bad. Lord, we thank you for, for moments of contention that lead to moments of greater peace. Lord, we thank you that here we can do life together in its reality, not, dis not distracted by, by the things of the world, but, but can focus on you the eternal loving saving god and lord i pray for anyone here today who feels far from you this morning lord may the message you've laid upon my heart speak to them directly and draw them to your love shown perfectly through our crucified lord Lord, cleanse us, wash us, lift us in Christ. And Lord, may we be revived to leave this chapel and flow out to the valley, wherever you've called us to this week, to witness your love and truth to the world. Lord, I ask again, rid us of distraction. May we focus on the word you have for us this morning. May we understand the, the grave seriousness of this truth because it has eternal consequences. Help us come in reverence. Help us come in fear. Bend us, almighty God. Amen. Amen. So um, <clears throat> we'll, we're back in Mark. If you can have it open in front of you please mark chapter 3 that sophie kindly read out to us earlier it's been a few weeks since we've been in mark isn't it but i think we needed the break because uh jesus has really hit the ground running hasn't he there has been uh, so much going on here in these uh, first few chapters We've seen, haven't we, that Jesus had an incredible baptism. At his baptism, the heavens themselves opened and the voice of God was heard by mortal ears. This is my son. 
in whom I am well pleased. Imagine being there to see and hear that. And straight after this, this momentous event, Jesus is then immediately whisked out to the, the wilderness to, to take on the devil himself. And then where's he next? He's, he's found in, uh, in Capernaum, screaming demons out of people, healing the sick, upsetting the uh, political establishment and causing quite a lot of attention to himself. And in our reading today, we see that uh, verse 7, a large crowd from Galilee began to follow him. Jesus was becoming very popular with the people. So popular, in fact, that, that he had to withdraw himself rather tactfully away to, to a lake. Which was a genius move. Because we're told in uh, these verses that so eager was people to, to get in contact with Jesus, especially those who were sick and wanted healing, that, that in verse 10, we're told that they're pushing themselves onto him. What we've got here, it's like a rugby match. They're all scrumming in to, to touch Jesus. So for his own safety, Jesus needed to create some space but between him and the people that were following him. And he does this with a boat on the lake. Can you see how, how the, the water would create a natural crowd barrier? And we see that Jesus has, uh, he has all sorts of people following him here. People from, from different regions with, with different ailments, and needs. We're told in, in verse 11, those with unclean spirits were, were falling on the floor and they're crying out, you are the son of God. It's all so hectic, these verses, isn't it? But isn't it great? Amen? Jesus here has all the attention. People are loving him. Crowds are following him and praising his name. Brilliant. But then in the midst of all this hype, we see Jesus' rather odd response to it all, don't we? In verse 12, Jesus gives strict orders not to tell others about him. That seems a bit odd, doesn't it? It seems rather counterproductive to the Great Commission, where he says, go out and tell the whole world. But here he says, shh, don't tell anyone. As Christians, we want crowds of people to be amazed at the Nazarene, don't we? We want crowds of people to cry out, you are the son of God. Say that with me. You are the son of God. That's what we want, don't we, as a church? So why then do we see here that Jesus tells the people to keep quiet? Verse 12, don't tell anyone. Why? Well, Jesus is sending out a very strong message here. A very strong message that we as a church need to take seriously. What Jesus is doing here is he's telling the crowds that he's not a celebrity. If he was a celebrity, he, he would be playing to the crowds, wouldn't he? If he was a celebrity, he would be telling people just what they want to hear. He would be performing for them. He would be fulfilling their, their every desire so that they can tell others to tell others to tell others and his fan base will grow. But this is not Christianity, is it? 
Jesus is clear here in verse 12 that he is not a celebrity. Why? Because he is the king of glory. Amen? Who is he? The king of glory. King of glory. And because he's the king of glory, Jesus does not want fans. Like these nutters here. Jesus doesn't want fans. Say that with me. Jesus doesn't want fans. What Jesus wants is genuine, authentic followers, otherwise known as disciples. You see, Jesus understood the problem with having fans. So if you have fans, your, your relationship with them is always one way. It is one based on emotion. It's one based on sensation. It's one based on, on an ideological affiliation that only you can give them. And such attributes, they're, they're short-lived. They do not last the test of time. Can I give you an example? It's a rather naughty example, because it's going to embarrass my wife. I'm getting a telling off later. As a young lady, she's still a young lady, but when she was a teenager, <laughs> she was a big fan of a boy band. It wasn't Nodfer's boy band you saw here. <laughs> Take that. How sad. <laughs> and she absolutely adored who? Robbie Williams, he looks nothing like me. <laughs> she had posters on her wall. She went to see him live to see Robbie. But when Robbie left, take that. When things got hard to follow Robbie and take that, Harriet stopped being a fan. Harriet was very upset. Robbie was dead to her. You still haven't forgiven him today, have you? <laughs> Harriet needs to repent. <laughs> the point I'm making is simple. Jesus knew that fans only follow you if you give them what they want. And this is what is happening here in our reading. And sadly, we still see this, thing, this type of thing in churches up and down this valley. Churches that, that are motivated to people, please, to get the numbers in. And do you know what? Fans do come. And they come for all sorts of reasons. But every reason that they come for is always, always, always about them. It's always about what they can get from church, what they can take from church. And the reason why they drift away is because they come for them and their feelings and their emotions and their desires on the Sundays where they don't seem to get, to get much from church, where they, they, they drift off for, to follow other selfish gain. We've seen it here in our own midst, haven't we? The hoppers and the spirit chasers. Ask yourselves, what happens when I come to church and I don't feel like I've got anything from it? What do you, what do you think after, after a Sunday service where that happens? It happens to us all. What happens when, when you come to church and and you get convicted by the word and, and it gets uncomfortable and you think, oh, I don't like this. What happens then? What happens when you get challenged by the preacher? What happens if, if you don't like a particular hymn that we sing? Or when uh, that particular person who always rubs you up the wrong way comes and sits right next to you? 
and annoys you throughout the whole service. What then? Do you begin to drift off? Do you begin to look elsewhere for a different experience? Do you start making excuses not to come? If this is you, friends, you have to ask yourself, are you a disciple of Jesus Christ? Are you a follower? Or are you just a fan? Are you simply coming to church for what you can get out of it? Or have you come to play your part? To serve and worship the living God. To be a witness to your brothers and sisters around you and show them your love. Do you come here to love people beyond your personal preference? Yes, you might be someone falling on the floor like the people in our reading in verse 11 crying out, Jesus is the Son of God. You might outwardly be really passionate in your faith. But my friends, it is clear from this text that Jesus isn't interested in that. He isn't interested if you're coming here for yourself. In fact, Jesus calls you here to be silent. Verse 12. Why? Well, to paraphrase, he's saying, listen, do me a favour. Don't tell your friends about me because I don't want any more of your type following me around. I don't want anyone close to me who is simply coming to take, 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 because that's the opposite of the Christian message. Jesus is saying, I'm not here to entertain you. I'm not here to fulfill your desires. You're not in charge of this relationship. I'm God, not you. I am the way, the truth and the life and I have come to die for your soul. I don't want fans crying out my name. I want disciples. I want followers, authentic, real disciples who, 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 who are willing to take the gospel seriously and do as I do by giving all to others. Matthew 16, 24. Deny yourself of everything Pick up your cross, follow me. Amen? Jesus is saying here, I want people who love me so much that they are willing to put themselves and their wants and their desires and their needs aside to stand for the gospel of truth in difficult times. To come to church when they really can't be bothered to. Why? So that they can be a blessing and encouragement to everyone else that's made the effort to come. To come to church not for themselves, but for others. Amen? Jesus is saying here that I want people who, who come to church not because they like a particular style of preaching or, 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 or the particular style of music or, or worship or, or a particular uh, subject matter or, or practice. I want people to come because, because they know that when, when God's people gather in spirit and in truth, I am in the midst. And friends, this is true. And this should amaze us. As we are gathered, Jesus is here. <coughs> right now, the author of creation is here. He is the head of the body, 
which is the church. And he right now is speaking to us through his word. In reality, Jesus is here. And by grace, he keeps meeting with us week after week at Nodfer. Amen? And he comes in power and he comes in majesty. And we gather to meet our King. And I wouldn't miss that for the world, would you? I've used this example a number of times this week. But imagine if someone famous was coming to this valley. And I mean super famous. An A-list megastar. Let's think of someone. Brad Pitt. Right? Brad Pitt, who's that? <laughs> yeah. Brad Pitt. A-list Hollywood celebrity, he's coming to Tallowain Rugby Club next Sunday to teach people how to play the bagpipes. <laughs> Do you think only the one or two bagpipe enthusiasts are going to turn up to that meeting? It's going to be jam-packed, isn't it? Is this because everyone has a sudden interest in bagpipes? Now, why are they going? to see Brad Pitt, yeah? As we meet at Nod for Church, Monday the women, Wednesday the prayer meeting, Thursday the brotherhood, Sunday as a church, the King of glory is here. The Prince of Peace. The Almighty God, the most famous man in history who died and rose again, he is here. But you're okay to give it a miss now and again. Jesus doesn't want fans. He wants followers. Amen? Jesus doesn't want fans. He wants followers. And this is what this passage is all about. And in this final section that Sophie read to us, we see how he chooses who he wants. And he does this by verse 13, he takes them up a mountain. In that one moment, he filters out the self-indulgent, self-serving crowd by those willing to go the extra mile with him. And from the hundreds that were saying, we want healing, we want you to feed us, we want all this stuff from you, Jesus says, all right, walk up the mountain with me. And who does he have left? Twelve. And one of them was Judas. Twelve people willing to go the extra mile. Twelve people willing to live and die for Jesus. Twelve willing people willing to, 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 to give up their old lives and their personal desires to be given a new identity and new names. Verse, verse 16, Simon, Peter, the rock. Verse 17, James and John, sons of thunder. John Funnel, Christian. Jane Anslow, Christian. Sharon Thomas, Christian. Amen? Jesus chose the people who followed him not for what they can get, but in love for what they can give. People who, who understood that they will not always get what they want from Jesus. <coughs> People who knew that, that they will be pushed out of their comfort zones for Jesus. People who will often get things wrong and will face correction from Jesus. People who, who desire to give more than they can afford and, and love more that, than they can love. 
Because of who? Jesus. These are the type of people Jesus calls and then gives authority to share his truth out to the world. He doesn't tell the disciples to be quiet, does he? Just the show-offs. And these are the people I hope and I pray that the Lord is filling these pews up with. Amen? I'm sick of the time wasters. I'm sick of the hoppers. We don't want fans, we want followers. Amen? Authentic disciples willing to do life together with him. He doesn't want do-gooders. He doesn't want attention seekers. He doesn't want consumers. He doesn't want show-offs. He doesn't want the, the self-absorbed. Who Jesus wants are the broken, the humble, messed up people like Pastor John, who know that without him, they're utterly lost and have nothing worth having. And as a result, owe all that they have to his saving grace and will follow him wherever he tells them to go whether in sickness or in health in utter love for him we will we will climb that mountain together amen this is the choice we've been given today it's binary it's a choice that, by the blood of the Lamb, you have been given freedom to make this morning, by his grace. Are you going to be, verse 7 to 12, a Jesus fan? Or are you going to be, verse 13 onwards, a follower? What's it going to be? The first group, Jesus clearly rebukes. He actually gets into a boat to avoid them. The second group, Jesus calls up a mountain where he chooses them to be his own. I know where I want to be. May God give us all grace to be followers of Jesus. Amen. Amen. We're going to rise and sing.
My son Oscar. We all know him, don't we? Cheeky little chap, isn't he? As you all know, he's, one of, he's at one of the top schools in Britain. I'm not showing off. I am a proud dad, but there, there is a reason why I reference this. He's been home with us for three weeks, isn't he? And he's going home later this evening. And uh, this school is just another level. And uh, really, he has no right to be there. Not with a father on the, the salary of a Baptist minister. He's there with people from Hong Kong and Dubai. There was a lot of Russians, but they went pretty quickly. <laughs> mm. But it costs a fortune to go there, but it really is the best education. He got there on a full scholarship. Praise the Lord. Everything's free. He hasn't had to pay for a single meal, a single drink, a single lesson. They give him everything. Three years ago when he signed that form to say he was willing to accept that, that scholarship, the doors were opened. But if when he started that school, he decided not to bother going to lessons, not to bother doing the homework, to be a bit of a bully with the other kids, we'd all be very disappointed, wouldn't we? What would we be saying? What a waste. What a waste of an opportunity. You see, in reform circles, we get knocked. People say, oh, you're too legalistic. You, you demand that people obey Jesus as Christians. You demand that people go to church as Christians. That's legalism. Jesus, Jesus freed us from the law. Friends, read your Bibles. He's given us everything. His body and his blood. So that we are free to live according to the law. So that we are free to come and gather each week. Free to serve and love him. Free to be his witnesses in the world. Amen? Amen. As you take the bread and the wine... Please remind yourselves that your salvation is free. That Jesus has paid the price in full for, for you to go to heaven. And for you to be able to meet and commune with God and live today. There's no cost. All can come. Nothing in my hands I bring. Simply to the cross I claim. But when you come to this table and receive this free gift, you're also signing your life away. When Christ calls a person, he bids them to come and die. If you're not willing to give your life to Christ today, don't take it. You have no right to come to this table. But if you are willing to put your trust in him, eat and be glad. Amen. Brothers, can you serve?
got to get the new communion glasses out. Praise the Lord. Apologies for those that don't have one today. Come and see me afterwards. We'll do it together. Holy. Be holy for I am holy. That's our call, isn't it? This is where yourself comes to die. At the foot of the cross. I saw, the Lord said, this is my body, which has been broken for you. Please eat. The Lord said, this is the new covenant in my blood. Please drink. Loving and heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for the gospel. We thank you, Lord, that in Christ Jesus and him alone, we have salvation. We thank you for the liberty and freedom he gives out us to, to live out that salvation. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you will be with us this week. Guide our thoughts, guide our choices, so we can best show Jesus to our friends, family and colleagues and be on our knees for them, that you will be gracious to save and that they will follow us back here next week. Amen. Amen. We're going to rise and sing.
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. It's lovely to be back. Teas and coffees out the back.